Good morning, you sitting right there. How's it going? You in the background too, hey, come and, come and take a look. Trucker Josh Vlogs is starting. <laughs> I know you're there. It's another new day. Today is Wednesday and we're headed up to Arburg again today. Gotta be there bright and early. So we are once again headed out before the sun. Very unnatural. But it's coming to that season again here in uh, southern Manitoba where our daylight hours are getting shorter and shorter again. And that's okay, that means winter's coming and we have to pass through the next winter to get to next summer. All right, but this summer's not over yet, okay? This summer's not over yet, we're still having fun. We can just tell that uh, we're past the halfway mark of it, I think. When does fall start? September 21st. And it, summer starts June 21st, that means July, huh? July 21st is halfway through summer. Yeah, we're halfway, we're on the tail end of summer. Oh man, I'm sorry to put that idea in your head. I'm sorry, it's gonna be a good day, don't worry, we're gonna make it a good day anyway. Let's go get to our truck and uh, hook onto our trailer. I gotta hook onto a step deck roll tight. And make sure I got a bunk with me in there. I'll show you what I mean when we get there. And then two hours north. All right, all your lights coming on. All right, all right, let's go. Oh, oh, there you are. And she's grumpy right off the hop again. At least you're predictable. Let's go find a trailer. Let's see what kind of step deck roll tights we got here. freaked me out a little bit. I didn't hear it click in like I usually do and lock in. I thought I had gone over. I thought the trailer was too high and it went over the fifth wheel. The kingpin, I mean, went over the fifth wheel. That would have been an unnecessary headache in the morning, but it just clicked in really quietly because I came back here to check and 
It's all hooked in. I mean, you can't really see it, I guess. I'd have to uh, get the flashlight. <sighs> One second. Let's go get the flashlight. I want to show you that it's clicked in so that you guys can see as well because for some reason it did not feel like it clicked into me when I backed under it. That it was, uh, it is clicked in. I guess I'm, uh, I'm just that gentle, I guess. Okay, here, I got the, got the flashlight here. Okay, you see it there, right? She is clicked in. Locked and loaded. Alright, well. We did the visual inspection there and we'll do a tug test before we leave, obviously. We'll be good to go. Alright, so we got the tri-axle with the lift axle in the back. This trailer's uh going to be going to California. I'm picking up freight headed down to the uh, the Golden State. And for some reason, I think someone once told me that any trailer going to California has to have a lift axle. I don't know if it needs to be down or up. I've never uh, actually driven a commercial vehicle into California. I've driven my personal vehicle into there and I've heard many horror stories of driving commercial vehicles in California. It's just not really a state that uh, I've had on my bucket list for driving trucks into. They make it very difficult for truckers to operate in California. Lots of regulations. So it's, I mean, I'll do it. If they, if they would send me there, of course I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna refuse a load. The only load I would refuse is a load that's unsafely loaded that I can't secure. And then, you know, all that we would do is we would fix it so that I can secure it. And then I would head out with it. I, I never say no to loads. Whatever they need me to do, that's what I'm here for, right? So this trailer is going to California. So if they were to ask me, hey, you want to take this to California? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Just, uh, what are the rules? All right, because I'm going to have to refresh myself on all the, the DOT and uh, commercial operating uh, regulations there. There's, there's, it's an interesting state. This is the trailer I parked here, uh, what, two days ago? Remember, I lined it up with neither trailer on either side because they were all crooked, so I made mine straight. Making sure the tires are all still filled with that premium air. It's gotta be premium, you know? It's going to California. They only accept premium air in the tires in California. I know about that regulation. Has to be premium, you have to change it every season. It's nuts. Well, everything's looking good, as it should even under the hood. So I'm gonna mark down here that uh, I've done my pre-trip on this trailer and on the truck. It's trailer 412 DTLR. The letters are important to include. Uh, that's just for our purposes so that we can identify what type of trailer it is. The D stands for a drop deck. The L stands for, uh, or the T stands for a triaxle. So DT, drop deck, triaxle. The L stands for uh, lift axle, and the R stands for roll tight. So this trailer is trailer 412. It's a drop deck triaxle with a lift axle, and it's a roll tight, DTLR. This trailer here is a rental, but if it would have our markings on it, it would be trailer, uh, you know, 123R just because it's a tandem. So we don't put T on there for tandem. We just leave it blank for tandem. That means it's just two axles. So the trailer number R because it's a roll type and it doesn't have a lift axle. So it doesn't have the L. It's not a drop deck. It doesn't have the D. You get it, right? So that is uh, for the purpose of, one second, let me put you in here. That's for the purpose of when you're talking to dispatch or when uh, you know, you're, let's say this trailer is going to be in California. When the driver calls in to say, hey, pardon me. When the, when the driver calls in to say, hey, I'm empty, I have trailer 412 DTLR, the dispatch automatically knows 
like who the driver is because they contacted them and they exact they know exactly what equipment he has with him they know that he has a drop deck lift axle tri-axle they they that way they know what kind of freight like right off the hop they know what kind of freight they can they can book for a reload out of there it took me a little while to figure that out our van trailers are a little different uh like let's say a trailer in front of me here uh we have two levels in our in our trailers right so we call it a floor it makes two levels in the trailers you can fit more freight in that way and it's uh it's one of the designs that we have patented here that's sort of our thing right so it's uh a trailer over here for instance that one there has a floor in it so it's f 5120f that means it has a floor in it this one over here is 5064b that means it has a belly box also so you can put more freight underneath right other trailers just have the number oh, can i find one here 5171 over there because it's just a plain trailer no belly box no floors Actually, no, that is an F. It has, I think all our trailers have the second floor. Almost all. No, there's one over there, 5117. That doesn't have a floor, so it doesn't have an F on it. That's what the letters are for after uh, trailer numbers. They identify the trailer to the company. They don't really have anything to do with uh, you know, DOT. DOT would be worried about the license plate in the back and the registration and the safety. They don't really care what numbers and letters we put on our trailers to identify them to ourselves. Here's a good example, 5086B. It means it has a belly box underneath here. Belly box trailers also have a floor, but you can put more stuff and more freight in there. Extra storage room, right? That one over there does not have the belly box. 5126F it means it has a floor. It's got ramps on it but no belly box, see? No belly box, so it just has a floor. That's how we identify that. This one, trailer 605, it's a tri-axle with a lift axle and it's a roll tight. You sort of understand, this one will be a D. It's trailer 408, D, it's a drop deck. T, it's a tri-axle. 408, DT. If it didn't have that third axle, it would just be 408D. Uh, let's do our truck test. Yeah, we are attached. Okay, good. So the other, the only other variation of trailer number that, that we have that I didn't tell you was just a regular flatbed, just a flat. Won't have any letters behind it. Oh, we got someone coming through here. So uh, these are all step decks in front of me here. One of these was a flatbed. Let's say the like 111D is here. That's the one to the left right there. 111 and it's a drop deck. If it wasn't a drop deck and it was just a flatbed, it would just be trailer 111. Make sense? But every place has a different way of identifying their trailer. So that's not universal. Every place is different than that. doing kind of dangerous to just block a whole highway like this man I guess you got to do what you got to do but there's got to be a better way I mean there's nobody behind me actually no there's another truck coming now I guess you got to do what you got to do right I get it I just got my hat 
hazards on and hopefully the guy coming behind me at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 mile an hour will uh, see that I'm stopped. Nice truck though. All right, man, come on. I know you know how to back up. You can get it in there. Come on, you're already straight. You didn't have to pull forward again. Just give her, there you go, you got this. You're right in the center of the driveway. Just straight back, my friend. Straight back. Now don't mess it up and turn your wheels. Just straight back, there you go. as it could be I guess we're already loaded up buttoned up ready to go that's it just this and this stuff is going to San Francisco California way out to the Golden State there so I don't know if I've ever been to San Francisco I feel like I have, but it was when I was a kid riding along with my dad in the truck. He used to haul uh, a reefer trailer, like a refrigerated trailer. We call it reefer. It's not that kind of reefer. It's reefer refrigerated. It's clarifying for you guys. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know where your mind went. Uh, he used to haul uh, that, and we'd haul produce out of California back to Canada. So we'd always go down to California, pick it up there, and I'm pretty sure with him, we went to San Francisco. I don't know if we crossed the Golden Gate Bridge, but I, I remember seeing it. I'm pretty sure I was there, but it was a long time ago. I'm 33 now. Uh, it would have been more than 20 years ago that I was there. I'm sure it's changed a lot by now. 20 years ago, I was 13. Probably about 25, between 20 and 25 years ago is when I was last in that area. That's headed up there, so look out. You guys got freight inbound. Three points contact truck chat. Sometimes I like to live on the edge. And only have one point of contact. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, okay, so it's time to head back. Another successful day. We got stuff done. That's what I call a successful day anyways. I don't know. What do you call a successful day? Is it more than just getting stuff done? It feels good, you know, accomplishing something, even if it was just picking up a load in Arbor. Whoever's going to San Francisco, have a good trip, good sir or ma'am. It's going to be good. San Francisco is... Uh, Climate-wise and weather-wise is actually one of the nicest places in on the continent, right? It's like a steady 65 degrees all year round. It's 20 degrees, 20, 25 degrees, like perfect temperatures all year round. It's, it's too bad that place is just so crazy. You know, if you can get past all the, uh, the human waste on the streets. <laughs> the weather's nice, though. The weather's nice. I'm sorry, I gotta poke a little fun at you guys. I'm sorry. 
So I'm headed home. Britt is working late again tonight. She's picked up a lot of extra hours lately and uh, it's been helping us out a, a great deal. Like I was telling you, was that this morning or yesterday we uh, did our budget uh, for the next, well, for, for the foreseeable future. And, uh, you know, we're realizing where we have spent uh, irresponsibly and we're realizing in other places where we can spend more responsibly. Uh, it's very important to be uh, conscious of where your money is going, where it's coming from, when it's coming, when it's going, what's happening to it at all times, when to invest, when to take out your investment and put it somewhere else. And you got to stay on top of it, especially in today's economy with everything going up and down and up and down. And uh, Right now with prices going up, 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 it looks like inflation. It's, uh, you gotta make sure you take care of your finances. Some people don't think it's a big deal. Oh, whatever, money comes and it goes. Yes, but it goes more than it comes if you're not careful. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Learn to make sure there's more coming in than going out. Because if you don't pay attention to it, I guarantee you more will be going out than coming in. Guarantee that's just the natural default. More goes out than comes in. It's very easy to spend money. Very easy. Not as easy to make more than you want to spend. That makes sense? Don't take financial advice from me. I'm a truck driver. All right, you ready for the rock star welcome? Phone down, don't want that to break. Here we go. Oh my! It's me! It's me! In the flesh! In the flesh! Hey, hey, I get it! I get it! You're excited! I need to poo! In a second, buddy. In a second. You wanna go out? Alright, get out of here then. Crazy animals. Wiener! Why are you hiding again? There he is. I know, it's just me. It's just me, I never get a rock star welcome from him. Only his mother gets a rock star welcome. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'll get the shovel.